Hey button pushers, Nick here and today we're going to be taking a look at Gatto Roboto for the Nintendo Switch. The game came out on the 30th of May and it's available for PC and Switch. It's developed by Doinksoft and published by Devolver Digital. Devolver Digital sent over the review copy for the game. Thank you very much to them for that. The full review is on the website and the link for that is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more of these gaming videos. But for now, let's get to it. As a brief overview of the story, you play as Kiki, who is an adorable little kitty cat, and your spaceship that you're on crashes, which may or may not be your fault, but besides the point. The pilot of the ship is stuck, so you have to explore the world around you to try and find a way to get him out and get you both to safety. <laughs> Now you're not going to get very far on cuteness alone, so you need to find something to protect yourself and to allow you to defend yourself. Thankfully there are mechs scattered about everywhere, so there are mech stations, so if you go and stand on them, it will spawn a mech suit that Kiki can jump into and suddenly you have some protection and you have a weapon to kill enemies with. At the start of the game, the mech suit is quite basic. You just have a pistol and a little health bar. But as you progress through the game, you can find power modules. Uh, some of them are quite well hidden, so you need to explore properly. Other ones you'll come across through natural progression and they contain things like health modules which expand your NRG bar which is your health bar and some of them contain new weapons or even new skills that the mech suit can do. The skills of the mech suit go hand in hand with the exploration of the game so you need one to do the other basically. So it's quite open the map so when you first start you can go either way left or right but you're going to reach areas where you can't progress any further because there might be something blocking the way or there's a gap that's just too high to jump over in which case you kind of double back on yourself go the other way and eventually when you've got a skill that will allow you to progress over the first obstacle you can go back to that and get over it. This is where the map is really helpful as well because when you bring up the map it will build itself as you go along so the more you explore the bigger the map gets. It will also show you any branching rooms on rooms that you've been to so if there's a room that's greyed out then it means that it's connected to a room you've been to but you haven't been there yet so that's a good way of keeping track of where you've been or where you might need to go next. This is really helpful as well for finding secret areas. So there's some areas on the map where you don't actually need to go there to progress the story, but it might contain a module that you will need further down the line. So some of the modules that are more hidden are probably health modules, which is definitely worth finding because it just increases your NRG bar. But there are also uh, data consoles, so give you a little bit more backstory on what's happened in this area and there's also cassettes that you can pick up these are a, a fun little 
quirky item that acts as the collectibles of the game. So each cassette that you pick up gives you a different palette to the game. So anytime within the pause menu, you can change the palette of the game, which just gives the whole thing a different feel because it gives it a different well, color palette, funnily enough. There's various different obstacles that you're going to have to get around and different dangers in the world. One of the big ones are obviously the enemies. Uh, they're randomly spawning enemies that will appear in various places throughout the levels. Every now and then you'll get to a place where you're actually locked in a room until you defeat all of the enemies. Other times there might just be enemies wandering around. You can kill them if you want or you can just get around them. There's also obstacles that you can't navigate with your mech suit. So, for example, if there's an area that's got lots of water, then you're going to need to exit the mech suit because Kiki can swim, but obviously, for obvious reasons, the mech suit can't go in water. So you need to play as Kiki, find a way to drain the water or get the mech suit around it or simply find another mech station further down the line and replace it. Sometimes though there are extended underwater areas and here you're going to need a little bit of extra protection and thankfully there are little submarines that you can control. They're generally weaker than the mech suits and they don't have any of the power ups that you would have got from the mech suit stations but it's better than nothing really. Plus watching Kiki pilot a submarine is one of the most adorable things in the world. So naturally with this being a platformer you're not just going to have to deal with basic enemies you're also going to have to deal with bosses and mini bosses. Uh, the mini bosses are fairly frequent throughout the game uh, the boss fights however happen obviously a little bit rarer than that but they are challenging and this is where the frustration of the game can start to creep out because honestly what's a platformer without a little bit of frustration? boss fights pit you against the cat's arch nemesis being a rat and the rat also has himself a little mech suit or herself not sure and their mech suit changes every time you face them and they get systematically harder as you go on as well and I promise you you will die a lot <laughs> With every boss fight though, especially in these kind of games, they have a certain pattern to the way that they move and they attack. So it's just a case of figuring out what their pattern is so it gives you an opening to attack. They've got the health bar at the top of the screen as well so you can keep track of exactly how much health they have left. It's always much more health than you have so you just need to be careful about how many hits you're taking as opposed to how much damage you're dealing them. Once you get an idea of the pattern it makes it easier but you do also need to still be very careful because even though you know where the attacks are coming from it doesn't change the fact that there are probably lots of things coming for you at the same time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Gato Roboto. As I said, the game is out now, it came out at the end of May, it's available on PC and Switch. All of the footage from this video has come from the Switch version. Review is on the website, so the link for that is in the description below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe so you get to see all the future gaming videos that I do. Thank you again for watching and until next time, hit the music.